this is the great legend, and I'm coming at you live tonight with the Legends Truth. Man, you know, when we do these Legends Truth videos, I slow down time. I read between the lines of digital reality. And man, that's what we're here to talk about tonight on Legends Truth. I'm bringing you the truth that I see fit that I can see through this digital reality. Remember, fans, there's 95% right in this circle here. Some of us are up in that 5%. So it's things we see differently that no one else can see. So, fans, great to be here tonight, man. Let's check out the chat before we get all up in this. We got Perry Comics. What's going down? Yo, yo, Perry. One of the best. The CBL, the comic book lurkers, coming at us live from every direction, all day and all night. But here, you're watching YouTube.com forward slash Daddy, RDaddy95, where the great legends always coming at you live with comics, cooking, gaming, and the truth. And tonight, we have Comic Books NYC. One of the hottest collections in the comic book community. If you're into comic books and you want to see some awesome Holy Grail style slabs, investment books, man, you've seen them all, but you ain't seen Comic Books NYC. So make sure you check that man out. One of the best. What is up? We got the Comic Core coming in third. Man, ain't no doubt about it. Great to see Comic Core tonight. And we got one of my old school G's from 2009. No, I don't know. 2011, 2012. Mr. Gretzky 9966. We're going to be checking the chat here because, you know, like I said, the chat is where it's at. But first, we're going to go back in time, fans, to November 28th. 1946. I'm going to give you the lowdown. We got the complete Dick Tracy. You know what I'm saying. Volume 10, 1945 to 1947. And two of the main villains on here are Itchy on the cover, scratching himself, and Influence. Some more of the villains on the back that you get to see in issue 10 here. Or shall I say, Volume 10. And these were the Chester Gould's original Dick Tracy daily newspaper strips. And I need to order um, the 26th volume. I haven't ordered that. It came out in July. I forgot to order that. But we're going to be talking about influence. Now, we're going to be talking a little bit about Chester Gould, Dick Tracy influence. You know, the uh, Chester Gould loved to pick his villains and, man, he did a great job with influence. Itchy, you know, a lot of the names, prune face, shoulders. You know, if the guy's name was shoulders, he had big shoulders. You know what I'm saying? If the guy's name was lips, he had big lips. If the guy was named Itchy, he was Itchy. If he was flat top, his, he had a flat top. You know what I'm saying? So influence is a guy we're going to talk about right now. So stay tuned after these messages. Commercial gimmick. Get some every time. <laughs> Gotta set the scene. It's that old school. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. So here we go. Influence was first seen shooting a man and throwing him in his car off a pier because he had failed to pay a debt. Who is Influence? Well, let me tell you. Influence was a casino owner and murderer who had developed special contact lenses that allowed him to easily hypnotize people. And his most notable features were his round eyes, prominent cheekbones, and big nostrils and wavy dark hair. His encounter with Dick Tracy goes a little something like this as we go back in time to November 28, 1946. <laughs> yeah! Influence. Was first seen shooting a man and throwing him in his car off a pier because he had failed to pay a debt. He then stopped into the restaurant owned by Vitamin Flintheart and used his hypnotism on him for meager things. Influence later came back and had Vitamin take a ride with him in his car. 
<laughs> That's never a good sign. <laughs> if you ever seen The Godfather. <laughs> yeah. Vitamin recognized Influence as the owner of a casino where Vitamin had lost $20,000 and never paid. Since Vitamin was now penniless, Influence used his hypnotism to make Vitamin become his servant. He made Vitamin burn down his restaurant and end his friendships with the radio host, Christmas Early, and her ward, theme song. <laughs> radio host, Christmas Early's her name. Or maybe it's his name. I don't know. I haven't read that story. <laughs> and her ward theme song. You know, most time, your ward is named Robin, but <laughs> I guess not here. So anyways, Influence also made him smoke a piece of paper instead of a cigarette. Drink lukewarm tea, which Vitamin detested. Kept on his, kept on his coat, even though it was hot. Sleep on the floor with his head on a brick instead of a pillow. And swallow seed peas instead of vitamins. Shit. <laughs> Influence's plan was to keep vitamin under his power until vitamin's debt to him was paid off. And possibly after that. Influence planned to have vitamin settle the debt by enticing a wealthy fellow actor named Florence Lane into funding a non Existent. Shit. <laughs> What's that? Existent. Oh, there we go. Existent. Theatrical production. This is live. Okay, this is live. I'm trying to make it professional. <laughs> I'm just having fun here. This is the truth, baby. Florence, under Influence's command, paid him $5,000 increments, and Influence sub subju subjected her, subjugated her to degrading deeds like he had with Vitamin. Influence made Florence serve as his cook and Vitamin his butler. Dick Tracy began investigating Vitamin's disappearance. Tracy eventually discovered that Influence had murdered the optician who had made Influence's lenses of colored cellophane. Now Vitamin had no clean shirts, so Influence went to the dry cleaners to pick up his clothes. Pat Patton who had been monitoring the cleaners, ambushed, un <laughs> ambushed influence, but was also put under his control and beaten, oh my God, beaten with brass knuckles. Influence left Pat in a banded refrigerator in the city dump. Pat was nearly killed while trapped in the refrigerator, but he managed to reach Tracy on his two-way wrist rodeo and was rescued. Using a bloody piece of newspaper found on Pat's jacket with Florence's address on it, the police were able to track down Influence. Influence knocked Tracy unconscious and escaped with Vitamin and his henchmen by wearing Tracy's fedora and trench coat. Man, that classic fedora and trench coat. Who can forget it? Influence attempted to dispose of Tracy's clothes by tossing them over a bridge, but they landed on a patch of ice and were found by a young girl named Misty Waters. I love that. Chester Gould named a young girl named Misty Waters because he throws the damn coat and the hat near some freaking Misty Waters. So Chester Gould used the name. I love it. Okay, sorry to be a fanboy. I mean, I'm a Chester Gould fanboy here. Okay. So, Tracy followed Misty. Okay, yeah, she returned the items to Tracy, who was being treated for his trauma in the city hospital. Tracy followed Misty back to the ski resort, where she had found his clothes, believing that he would find influence there. Tracy's instinct proved correct after Influence's henchman Slim won a new car in a raffle. <laughs> Hello, raffle. Comic book community right there. At the resort. The fugitives were about to escape when Tracy confronted Influence. Influence tried to use his hypnosis on Tracy again, not knowing that Tracy was prepared with a cane housing a metal chain and his own set of cellophane lenses. Tracy struck Influence with the chain, breaking the lenses in his eyes, and Influence was taken into custody. But you know, have no fear. Influence does reform. Sometime later, after Dick Tracy's 50th birthday in 1981, Tracy received a note from an old friend saying that they were going to kill Diet Smith on his Whistle Stop Fusion Now tour, which Tracy volunteered to travel, travel with as the police li li liaison. Suspecting that the letter had come from a former adversary, 
Tracy took some side trips along with Dot to see some of Tracy's reformed enemies, including Mousy, Coffeehead, Pear Shape, The Mole, and Influence, who had had a, relate, a religious conversion in prison and was patrol, paroled early. And he goes on to join the FBI, and he's making his living as a hypnotist. Man, so I tell you what, people, that uh, that influence man, you talk about some freaking power, that's influence for you. Now, you may have seen in the slideshow that classic guy that played influence in the Dick Tracy movie with Warren Beatty. That was Henry Silva. He played influence in the 1990 film, Dick Tracy. And, you know, cool um, trivia about uh, Henry Silva. He was also the voice of Bane in Batman the Animated Series. And, you know, man, I love me some Batman the Animated Series. And I love those voice actors who played those characters. And uh, Henry Silva, there he is right there. He did a great job as Bane. So, great stuff. And that pretty much is the story of influence from Chester Gould's eyes in the Dick Tracy Daily Comics, you know, that came out in the newspaper. Now, let me check the chat real quick, and we're going to go on to our next topic. Okay, so here we go. The chat's looking good in this neck of the woods coming at us live. We got Mr. Gretzky9966 still in the house. He's giving big props to Mumbles, who... um in the uh, this is you know volume 10 like I showed you but volume 11 starts the mumble stuff so very cool right there um, these are excellent man I'll, I'll, I'll show all that stuff in, in a future video you know some Dick Tracy goodness if you will we got the downright nerdy podcast man I subbed this guy up. I don't know how long I've been subbed in downright nerdy podcast man you know I'm so busy I hardly even make videos anymore uh, but dude I definitely I've uh, been checking you out here a little bit I haven't really commented I've just been kind of floating around doing some of them comic book lurkers but no nah, man I love the triple camera setup that's Jesus I, I don't even know like what kind of hours you put in like you know the uh the after fun you know the after hours party of editing videos and getting it all ready but uh it was cool to see you last night on comic core supposed to be comics comics course or story core comic core but it was just one of those off the rails nights and man if y'all haven't seen that go back on the rewind check out comic core I don't have that uh, link in the uh, video description below, but you can get there from youtube.com forward slash rdowdy95. Look over on the right side of the screen. Look at my channels, and, and uh, you'll see some of my friends in there. We got still got NYC up in here. He's doing really good. Mr. D, what's up, brother? It's great to see Mr. D. Area 51, some of the greatest-looking Star Wars collectibles and statues and just big, big items, man. Man, it is great to see y'all here tonight live on the Great Legend Show. And, you know, what we're going to be talking about tonight is something that is kind of a continuation of another video that I did here on The Legend's Truth about uh, mind control on my uh, Legends Truth channel or my Legends Truth playlist, and uh, it's the funny one with uh, the Mad Hatter as the uh, <laughs> as the uh, background wallpaper or, or the thumbnail, if you will, is what it what they call it. But yeah, let me get you the name of that video because it's an important video to go back on the rewind and watch because I did this video long time ago. And uh, the next thing we're going to be talking about is a little bit of new school action, mind control. It was mind control through social media. But tonight's video is, are you under the influence of social media? Because my, there's mind control, there's influence. Some say these things could be two and the same. And we're going to kind of take a look tonight at influence and how it plays a part in social media and how it can could control your minds so i had uh, watched a documentary on netflix recently and it was called um the great hack great freaking movie great documentary and i'm going to pretty much read you a little bit of the stuff um, from the great hack 
movie. This is by Reuters. Reuters.com. R-E-U-T-E-R-S.com. I'm going to give you what they wrote about this movie or about this documentary. It's on Netflix. so It's a documentary movie, whatever. So give you their uh, point of view and kind of give you a, a broad summary of some of the stuff we're going to be talking about tonight. But more importantly, we're going to go into some stuff, um, you know, my thoughts on that movie. We're also going to take a look at mystery boxes and how mystery boxes could also be used as a way to influence the minds. Um, and that could be comic book mystery boxes, you know, those old gimmick boxes like BAM box, you know, all that kind of stuff. Those fright boxes, fright crate, whatever, sports boxes, any kind of little mystery box. Okay, we're going to be taking a look at those. And then we're going to be taking a look at YouTube channels and how big and small YouTube channels can use the power of suggestion, the power of mind control, the power of influence to control the minds of of the viewer. So we've got a lot to talk about tonight. I'm going to go right on in to this. This is from Reuters here. What I'll do is I'll blow up the screen for you real quick so you can see my screen and uh, and, you know and all that good stuff. Let's see if this gimmick works. So this is from Reuters.com. Data is the new oil. So watch out for mass mining Netflix film. So you know Kind of a weird, random Reuters title by Elite Adela Suleiman. So this is London, the Thomas Reuters Foundation. Not no Thomas Wayne, Thomas Reuters. Big business and politics are mass mining everyday data from Facebook likes to online subscriptions for profit and power, according to a Netflix documentary released on Wednesday. The Great Hack says personal data has surpassed oil as the world's most valuable asset and warns viewers that companies and governments are hacking into way more than computers. There are people out there who are trying to figure out how you think. If you don't understand how you think, they will think for you, said directors Karim Amar and Yahan Noyam. It's not just our our computers that have been hacked. It's our minds, they said in a statement. The two-hour documentary showing on the Netflix streaming video platform examines the state of privacy in the United States and Europe, where people spend much of their time online, volunteering countless nuggets of exploitable information. It centers on the Cambridge Analytica affair, which saw an international consultancy target undecided voters in the Brexit referendum and the 2016 U.S. election, partly using Facebook data. Facebook Inc. agreed on Wednesday to pay $100 million fine to settle charges by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission that it misled investors about the misuse of its users' data related to Cambridge Analytica. Facebook did not admit or deny wrongdoing in agreeing to settle. Social media companies harvest millions of people's personal data and sell it to the highest bidder. Personal data is being used on a mass scale to manipulate and influence people, said Silky Carlo, director of Big Brother Watch, a British civil liberties group. Data-driven manipulation of populations is not only the reserve of shady startups, disturbingly, it is becoming the modus operandi in modern politics. Directors Amir and Noham first came to prominence for their Academy Award-nominated film, The Square, which looked at social media as a catalyst for the 2011 Egyptian uprisings. We ultimately made a film about whether we have free will. It's about democracy. It's about complacence, co- complicity. They said of their latest documentary, these are arguably the most important questions of our time. And man, I tell you what, fans, they really are. So I watched this show, The Great Hack, the documentary. Um, basically, this Cambridge Analytica used and used to data mined a lot of Facebook data from all around the world. They won um, due to people paying big bucks during elections and whatnot. Uh, Cambridge Analytica won six um, elections and 
I think they said the Ted Cruz one went like he won like by ninety nine percent to one percent. He's a senator of Texas, and then um, the last one in the final straw was the uh, Trump campaign, where Trump campaign uh, paid money to use Cambridge Analytica to do some analytics for him, and man, they hit, they just hit it out of the ballpark with what some of the stuff they did. So Cambridge Analytica. Um, you know, I don't want to like be for Trump, against Trump, for Hillary, against Hillary. I'm just laying down the facts here. But Cambridge Analytica pretty much solidified the victory of Donald Trump in that 2016 election. And what they did, the Cambridge Analytica, went to people's Facebook profiles that were public. Okay, that's the first, that's the first fuck up there. Um, sorry, I'm using bad language, but that's just fucking stupid. Are you fucking kidding me? You have your shit set to fucking public. God damn. Get a fucking clue there. Jesus. Jesus help the sad sacks of shit that uh, fucking didn't shit put their shit on private. Fucking ridiculous. Sorry. Jesus, forgive me. They're fucking idiots. Okay. So, they didn't have their shit on private to begin with. So, of course... Cambridge Analytica is going to hit them up first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're the ones that are going to get screwed first. Now, what they're looking for here is those people that have the public profiles on Facebook. They got them public profiles, and they put all their shit on it. So they put if they're a Christian or, they're, or if they're an atheist, you know, they put their religion on there, Buddhist, whatever. They put... Um, if they're male, female, if they're single, married, they they they'll even put their phone numbers. Those are those ones the the ones in that in that big ass thing, the 95%, you know, the mouse that are running around the hamster wheel just trying to run and get their cheese. That's those people. You know, we're we're over here. We're the smart ones. Okay. Shit. Facebook, man. Shit. All right. <laughs> I have so many problems with that stupid company. Not problems, but I mean like AI took over about a year or two ago, and the guys had to do one of those Windows restores to get their shit back together because the AI actually locked the programmers out. That's a big story in one of my past truth videos. Y'all need to check that out. But let's get back on track here. So all the public profiles. But what they did, they, did, they didn't go for the Republican, people that were Republican. They didn't go for people that were Democrat. They didn't go for the right. They didn't go for the left. What they went with were the undecided. And so what they did, since Trump was the one that paid that big-ass money, they started doing something called targeted, target, targeted ads. Now, in the truth community, we call, you know, the big brother and, you know, these, you know, those kind of people, they will have TIs and they'll target individuals that are, you know, pissing them off or, you know, divulging too much information that the big brother and all the heathens don't want you to know. So, what Cambridge Analytica did, they're kind of using that targeting system program. You know, they, you know, and it, you know, it's just like uh, marketing, you know, or you know, for businesses and things like that. But a little bit, a little more dirty because they're taking people's information. Now, yes, those idiots put their stuff on public. Okay, so you know, but still, it's really not. It's not ethically right. You know what I mean? It's kind of screwed up. Um. Especially if you're going to do that. Okay, so we'll get to the next step. Uh, so anyways, so on the Facebook profiles of the, the people that were undecided, uh, Cambridge Analytica put the ads up and got, uh, and you know, Trump, well, Trump paid for the ads and everything, but Cambridge Analytica put them up only on those targeted individuals, the ones that were undecided right down the middle. So you had the crooked Hillary ads. In the Great Hack movie, it's really awesome. It actually shows the uh, old, uh, well, like I don't, I don't want to be uh, ageist, but it has an older guy, and he was the one that created it. And they actually went in with hidden cameras and interviewed the main guy from Cambridge Analytica. I don't remember his name, but the main guy that was, you know, on on the court in the UK area, and um, they they had them all on tape, like confessing to this kind of stuff. So it's called The Great Hack on Netflix. If anything, watch the documentary. When this thing is uploaded and finished and streamed, I'll get all my links to. Uh, anyone watching on the rewind, I'll get the links to the Reuters ad, the um, Dick Tracy wiki on the uh, the web, and the um, you know the uh, trailer. I'll give you the trailer to the Great Hack uh, in the video description below. 
So, you know, they targeted those people with all these ads, like every day, like Hillary this, Hillary sucks, Trump's good, you know, maybe some of those thumbs and those those smiles he does. But anyways, pretty much that was, uh, you know, what got him over the hump, you know, or, or what, you know, and actually it was kind of a close race, you know, but like that got him pretty much over the hump, you know, so congrats to, to the Donald, I guess. So the great hack, that that's pretty much, and then it talks about not just how, you know, the election was controlled, but other things that, other ways that the, um, the world is taking this data and they're using it against us or using it to manipulate us or on social media, using it to be a division, like pretty much like a, um, it could be looked upon as a social media civil war, like a civil war in social media, you know, where you get on and, you know, some of your friends have different political views or what things of that nature. But what's happening is they're letting their stuff known. So even if you stu- have your stuff on private, Facebook still opens up all the data. So if you put status updates, if you put a lot of status updates, like I know a person that does, I'm not going to say any names, but he puts a lot of status updates about uh, alt-right stuff, pro-Trump, Republican type stuff. So when he puts all that stuff in his feed, he probably doesn't know this, but Facebook has some tracking algorithms. It's really tracking the stuff he's posting and what he's getting into. And what they can do with that information, if that information fell into the wrong hands, they could actually write up a psychological profile of all that stuff that that particular guy posts on Facebook. I mean, dude, that's insane. But but it's true. You know, they can definitely do that. I mean, it's amazing uh, technology, but it's technology that's being kind of used in a, in a bad light there, you know, stealing people's stuff, you know, writing up stuff for them. But what they've been doing is they want to make money. So the best way to make money is to have the rats in the wheel by the product that they see on the computer or TV or whatever. But mainly it's the computer. Now, once 5G hits and the 5G network is on all of these, they'll be able to target your individual phone. That's why they want this 5G to come out because they'll be able to target you easier because you're going to be connected 24-7 to a much bigger network. So that's going to be pretty insane when that happens. I'm thinking that could be like Beast System version 666. You know what I'm talking about? So make sure you're down with that. Make sure you get down with Jesus so you don't want to have no Beast System run in your life. All right, so... This was a great documentary, and like they said in this thing, one of the big deals was that data mining and, you know, doing that kind of stuff took over the value of oil, so it's like the hottest commodity in the world right now. So, pretty insane stuff from this Netflix documentary known as The Great Hack. Now, we talked about the great hack. We talked about Dick Tracy. Let's check the chat, and we're going to keep going, and we're going to keep seeing where it's at tonight on the Legends Truth, coming at you live from YouTube.com forward slash rdowdy95, your home for comics, cooking, gaming, and the truth. And I want to thank the eight folks here with us live right now for watching the legend this late at night. But I'm trying to shed the light on uh, what social media is doing and what this digital reality is doing, frankly. And I don't do a lot of these videos, only when I feel the need. And, man, I got the need to let it off my chest because you need to hear it from the very best. You ain't going to hear it anywhere else. You're only going to hear it from the great legend show. And if you didn't know, now you do. You need to hit that sub button up. Man, where's them thumbs up? I don't get no thumbs up no more. Man, last video I did, Dark Shadows, got over 200 views, baby. Now, that was freaking awesome. I hadn't got over 200 views since my last Legends Live auction. And, damn, I mean, that was like a blast from the past, man. You know what I'm saying? So, man, we got some great stuff going on tonight um, in the chat. Let me bring that chat up. Okay, good. I got the chat up. But let me take the chat a little bit 
on the rewind. See what we got going down. So we got a lot of love going down to everybody in the chat. Mr. D, Perry, Area 51, Downright Nerdy Podcast, man. I'm, I'm glad you had a good night last night. That was kind of cool. Hanging with the core. And you had another big name on there. Comics with Bueller, man. Great to see Bueller back on the core, man. We need that guy in that vest on the core a little bit more. We, we, but you got to stick around because you never know what you have in store if you're not watching the Comic Core. So make sure you watch that channel. All right, Keep a Thora, one of the best auctions you're ever going to see in the comic book community. One of the best, man. He was just on with BLC 646 having those comic book auctions. Man, they're awesome guys, and they got some great deals. So make sure you buy from them before you buy from eBay or any of the other gimmicks. And uh, we may get into that. We're going to get into some mystery box gimmicks pretty soon. So, man, great to see everybody that. What's up, Glitter and Duct Tape, man? Great to see you. Mr. D, so Facebook ads saying Hillary is bad is how Trump won the election. So Facebook outweighed the constant attacks on him by mainstream media. That's an interesting opinion. Yeah, that's it. That's a great way to look at it, Mr. D. Because mainstream media attacked Trump a lot, didn't they? Man, they went postal on that guy. So you never know. So, But, you know, the, it's a big, big fight. It really is, uh, Mr. D. It's social media versus mainstream media. Mainstream media, I'm going to let you know, I'm 42, but mainstream media, I believe, is going to be a dying breed because what what the millennial, and I'm not, I'm not age bias anything, I'm just kind of letting you know the generational gap. I was born a long time ago, man. I'm Generation X, so I was kind of born into the computers the early like you know desktop home computers you know in the 80s late 70s and all that all the way to today but the millennials man they've had this kind of stuff their whole life so those people they've had this their whole life baby boomers had the radio well the baby boomers parents and the baby boomers some boomers some of them had the radio black and white television color television and then uh, us generation xers had color television HD television, right? The millennials had color television, HD television, and just the internet, man. Social media, this YouTube. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like that's the people, man. All of us, man, Generation and X, man, that's old school. So the social media, that's the winner right there. That's that's what's going to win. Mainstream's not going to cut it anymore, you know? You can go out and buy those old ass commercials and try to be Mayor Glenn Jacobs and win win them over with the choke slam or that you know music you know, but a choke slam from hell ain't gonna win shit if you ain't got that social media presence. PD Hobbies, what's up, PD? I know you. I knew you'd be awake at night. Yeah, and you know those are those channels. That's that mainstream media, Mister D. It's just boring. I mean, it's like no one's gonna watch that stuff. 10 years from now. I mean, they'll wa they might watch it on the web, but no one's watching that stuff really anymore. You know why, man? They get distracted. I mean, these things are distractions. They're going to pull you to what you want to see, which is that targeted advertising. So, of course, mine's got a lot of comic book stuff on there, you know, and a lot of wrestling, a lot of wrestling stuff. What else? What else does it show on there? Maybe just wrestling and comics. You know, that's really the only thing I kind of look into you know and comic core <laughs> but yeah man great to see all y'all here tonight i'm going to turn this back off we're going to go into another another big topic well you know what i guess we can leave the chat up you know i'm not going to be showing any more gimmicks or i'm not going to be doing any more things on the computer but we're next thing we're going to be talking about is not only is targeting ads and, you know, the things we see on social media and, and everything, you know, kind of can mind control people. We're also going to be taking a look at mystery boxes. You know, in the comic book community, a lot of folks are really into this hot. Okay, back in the day, it was all about the live auctions, you know, and we still got live auctions. And but for a while there. These mystery boxes were really right up there. You know, auctions were here. Mystery boxes were about right here as well. Now, there's a little fall off on the mystery boxes now, I believe. But um, there's probably going to be even a bigger fall off after I'm done telling you about mystery boxes. <laughs> but mainly prior, our priority here is not going to be the band boxes or those kind of gimmick boxes. We're going to be talking about 
mystery boxes. Okay, there's a lot of comic book mystery boxes out there. There's the, the there's the small time mystery boxes, which are just totally random, and you know you're getting them at a great deal, you know, and it's just kind of a blind bag. Like if you went to my comic book, uh, mycomicshop.com and ordered, you know the uh, bundle packs where they send you random comics, you know, something like that. I'm not really talking about anything like low, low school. I'm talking about big time mystery uh, comic book boxes, you know, the comic book mystery boxes, the big ones that draw the um, customer in or, hmm, do we call them customers? We just call them mind controlled. <laughs> anyway, we draw those people in. By showing them a hot book. Something that they could have only dreamed of. Now this. This is something that I, I could dream of right here. Dark Shadows number 1 9.0. That's sweet stuff right there. But no we're not talking about that. We're talking about big time keys. We're talking Hulk 181's here. We're talking Amazing Spider-Man's 129's. I think that's the Punisher first appearance. We're talking Werewolf by Night. We're talking a, a lot of big time Bronze Age keys. That seems to be, you know, pretty popular. You know, it ain't going to break the bank. But it ain't, it, it ain't going to, uh, you know, it's not going to make us millionaires. But you know what I mean. I mean, it's just going to be, you know, solid. So mystery boxes so you know you're a first time person and and you know i'm now i'll just you know give an example totally using myself here it fictional because i haven't ever bought a mystery box but if i ever did so i would go i would get this mystery box how would i find out about this mystery box well it's simple we always watch our peers unbox a crap ton of stuff do i ever get reviews Sometimes, if I'm lucky. Mainly, I just get people unboxing a lot of stuff. All right, so they get um, their book. It's in a mystery box. So they pull out a lot of book, a lot of books, and, you know, it's first time, you know, they see that their friends are winning these big-time books, and they're learning about it, and they're asking questions, and they're figuring out how do these mystery boxes work. And so, okay, we go sign up, you buy these mystery boxes, blah, blah, blah. You go to their... You go to their Facebook page, their website, whatever they have to advertise it, and then you order it from them direct, right? So you're a user, you're a brand new user, so I'm getting, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm paying whatever money I pay to get the mystery box. I get my comics, and the box, open it up, there's no slab in there, so I know I didn't win no slab, but that's all right, it's just my first mystery box, right? I'm still having a great time, you know? Look at me, look at this, I got a great book here. <laughs> this is a great. I don't mean to like, I ain't rubbing no one the wrong way. We're going to get to the mind control part in a minute. The corrupt part, the kind of sickening part. Um, and this isn't any certain mystery box. This is like all mystery boxes. And it also is a lot of just what all marketing people do or what all big companies do that can get this kind of data on the consumer. But getting this mystery box and I'm pulling out these like variants. I don't know anything about them. Um, you know, there's Spider-Mans. There are a lot of Marvels because Marvel has a lot of variants. Um, there's sticker prices on there, like $40, um, $20. There's a $30 sticker price, stuff like that. So when you're pulling these books out and you have these sticker prices, you know, $40, $30, $20, whatever, you're like, all right, 40, 30, 20. What was that 90 bucks? So I got my, my money's worth or, you know, something, whatever it would it would look to you like you did get your money's worth, right? So, you know, you're cool, but now you don't, you're not really a Spider-Man fan. You're not really a Marvel fan. There was no Fantastic Four in there. No Shazam in there. Nothing that were my favorite books. I'm saying, well, this sucks. And then I'm like, I get on YouTube I show my stuff, and I was like, well, you know, it was okay, you know. And, you know, you, you put that smile on your face, you know, and, like, you try to be all into it. And you're like, eh, yeah, you know. Because you want to be positive for the community. And you're like, eh. But then it's like, shit, now i got to sell these on an auction, right? Mm. How many times, now I'm not, no disrespect to any auctions, I'm just saying. But how many times you, you, you get on an auction and you think, I bet that shit came out one of them mystery boxes. 
<laughs> well, it's a lot of times, you know, just from from me personally seeing friends open these and they're not really into them. Yeah, they're going to offload them. Um, and what better way to give the comic book community a great deal? So you're upset. So you go ahead and you want to do, so you make the video, right? And you put a hashtag. Maybe their hashtag is uh, Super Duper Mystery Box. You know, that's their name of their company is the Super Duper Mystery Box. That's the name of the company. So their hashtag is Super Duper Mystery Box. So you're going to put your review up. Now, being a YouTube creator, you want to get the most views you can on that video because everyone wants 1,000 subs. Everyone wants monetization. Everyone wants Super Chat. So you really try, you're bringing your A game. You bought one of these boxes. You unbox this damn box on your YouTube channel. You've put your stuff on Twitter. You've put your stuff on Facebook. You said, I bought this mystery box from these people. Come check out my video and see the results. Did I get the big book or did I get some other stuff? So basically what you just did there, you advertised for that company and influenced. You don't think you did, but, but remember originally when we got into buying the boxes, we first watched other people buy the boxes. We then subconsciously, you may not think so, but subconsciously, we were influenced by what? Social media. So, then, it's like a chain. It just keeps on going. It's like, it's insane. It just keeps on going. So, but when you make your video, and you're you know, putting it everywhere so all these people can see, and plus you tag the Super Duper Mystery Box people, and you're giving them free advertising from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you do the IG, YouTube, and, you know, your free advertising, right? So that's one thing, free advertising. You're giving it to them, and you're also influencing others to buy the same shitty-ass variants that you didn't want. Now, I'm <laughs> no, now, like I said, I've never done mystery boxes, but, of course, there will be the people that get the slabs, and we'll get to that here in a sec. So our next step is... Super Duper Mystery Box. What do they do? Well, if they're a startup, you know, they don't have, you know, Cambridge Analytica. But what they do have is they got a brain. So what they're going to do, and they got marketing techniques and everything like that, if they've read into this because they want to sell the most products as they can. So what they're doing, they're watching the video you just uploaded. The video I just uploaded on all and shared it on all of that stuff, they're watching that video. They're looking at my IG post. They're looking at my Twitter. They're looking at my Facebook page. And what are they looking for? Sure, they want to see what you thought about the box. Are they going to say, check mark, he loves the box? Or are they going to put X, doesn't love the box? If they put check mark, they don't give a shit. They're going to move on. If you put X, you didn't like the box, they're going to start targeting the individual that created the content, that created the review. They're going to go on the rewind, watch some of your old videos, tr and look at some of your old unboxings, and they're going to try to get a feel of what kind of comic that the Super Duper Mystery Box can next sell to you when they sell you box number two. So you want to go back because you still see your friends doing it, it's the end thing. It's about the same as auctions. You know, they're about the same at the moment. It's cool. We want to emulate what we see. And when our friends do something, we want to emulate it too. Because we want to be a part of the crowd. You know, we want to be a part of that. The 95% of the mice running in the wheel. Because the veil still hadn't been lifted from your eyes. You have not yet been able to slow down time. And read between the lines of digital reality. So you're still in the 95% running in the hamster wheels, you know, trying to get that cheese, trying to get the next biggest, baddest, best book you can find so you can please your attendees to your show that they watch because they want to know more what you're getting. So they're looking at all those books. They're going to see that this guy. Is some And, you know, they're also going to go to the YouTube page because the easiest way is looking at your My Channel page because that's where you put all your best stuff, the stuff that you're most proudest of on YouTube and a lot of stuff you, you love. So they're going to see Fantastic Four Complete Collection on this guy, you know. 
So then they're going to say, damn, okay, okay, he likes Fantastic Four. Well, let's send him something. So box number two, they send me a kick-ass variant, awesome, like something sweet, like a lot of Fantastic Four stuff, maybe throw a Shazam book or Black Adam or, you know, something that's related to those things because they targeted my page to get my information or even though the information's public, of course, so, you know, they got me there. Okay, it's public information because you put it on YouTube. But they're taking that information and they're putting it in their spreadsheet or whatever. And another thing they're doing is they're matching this Robert Dowdy guy. They're putting him with the great legend at rdowdy95 on Twitter, twitch.tv, whatever. Great le- The Great Legend Show Facebook page, rdowdy95 on YouTube. So they're putting... Two and two together. Okay, our Dowdy is great legend. Show. So, let's study this guy some more. Well, this guy's got 4,800 subscribers. Damn, that guy's got, that guy's, that's pretty good reach. Pretty good reach. It ain't mega channel. It ain't those mega comic channels. But it's just enough where we can use the great legend to hypnotize the rest of the folks to buy more mystery boxes from Super Duper Mystery Box. So, They're kind of doing that stuff in the background to sell more and more mystery boxes. Finally, you know, I can make the video and I can still bitch about it. And um, then maybe the next time I'll be the lucky one to get the slab or, you know, something like that. And then they take, uh, they may take your image or your video and they may embed it into their uh, web page or Facebook page and still using you as advertisements to sell their product of the Super Duper Mystery Box. So it kind of goes like that. If if you kind of slow down time, think about what they're really doing and how they can control the mind for people to buy more. And, dude, I've seen people buy Mystery Boxes 7, 10, 20 times, and uh, it starts turning into not just influence through social media, but it becomes a part of an addiction or, or, or something larger that that you never intended that to happen, but it happens. So be aware of like companies that do that. You know, and, it, and Mystery Boxes is just a, an example, but it can happen with any product, any time, and it's going to happen a lot more. Like I said, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it's all going to be on social media or you'll have the chip in your hand or forehead or whatever gimmick they're using to get your information and targeting that certain individual. Long ago, um, and in movies, you would see like everyone wear, like, say, the Google glasses. And you've probably heard this before um, at one of those Ted talks or whatever, but the Google glasses, you put them on, you're walking in a physical place, which is going to be pretty rare because most of the stuff you're doing online, you don't really shop. You mean, you just order everything from Amazon, you know, and all that. But if you go to a physical place and you have your glasses and you look in a window or you look in a sign, I want you to picture they live classic Roddy Piper movie. When he puts the glasses on, he sees the propaganda that only the aliens can see. But it's going to be not aliens, but it's going to be the AI that's going to be looking at your glasses. And then they're going to be showing you your cookies, your website cookies, your targeted ads on the glass of the window, you know, or on the sign. So if we take a look at old things, say like They Live, I mean, that movie starring Roddy Piper, John Carpenter directed, you can take that film and you can put a little polish on it, shine that shit up real good, and it's just as good in 2019 with what the social media companies, the big-time companies like Facebook and them and Google, Google and Facebook and Amazon and all of them, what they're doing to target individuals to make them buy stuff, to uh, target individuals to control some decisions they make, whether it be voting. There's the classic one. Look this up. I mean, it's, it's a shit move shit move but um there was a hacker or a bad guy i don't know hacker whatever you'd have to look this story up but um when the black lives matter movement came out and that was um, a really emotional moment for a lot of people because it tugged at their emotions african americans were getting uh you know screwed over beat up shot at killed all kinds of messed up right so 
They f- folks formed the Black Lives Matter movement as a way to let you know the world know that Black Lives do matter. We're tired of this oppression, right? And it was a great cause, and you know, I hope everyone learned everything from it. But remember, public Facebook profiles. Now, of course, granted, they do have facial recognition. So if your complexion of your skin is dark skin, you know, or, you know, you're probably going to be one of the ones targeted so they can get you on facial recognition. They can get you on ethnicity. If you put your ethnicity down as African-American, that's one they're really going to hit hard. So if your stuff's public and it says African-American on you, those targeted ads started popping up on African-Americans' Facebook page. And it was hashtag Black Lives Matter. And a guy in Australia, he had an ad up for Black Lives Matter. So a lot of folks were clicking on that ad, that ad that was targeted for them. And they were donating money to a cause they thought was worthy, a cause that tugged at their heart, a cause that they've seen history of the civil rights movement. They've lived it, and they are tired of it. And, you know, shit, it's, it is 2019. What the F, right? I mean, what the fuck's going on? So, but there's still oppression and there's still hate and stuff like that. And so what happens is this, uh, everyone pays in and donates money, but they donate all this money to this guy in Australia, some freaking white dude in Australia pocketed all of that money from him because he was able to target the individual, and he was able to access their personal data through Facebook. He probably paid a lot of big money, advertising money, and set it all up to where he only advertised to African-American profiles. And that's how dangerous this is. And a lot of people, you know, that you say the great hack, and, you know, yes, I mean, it is a movie about how, you know, Trump kicked some ass and, you know, controlled a lot of minds of the folks that were split down the middle. But throw all that crap aside. Throw all that crap aside because fate is going to do what it's going to do, and he was going to win regardless. So the thing about it is, it's scary for the future to know that so many minds have been influenced by the use of social media. Some other bad things, you know, you see is social media influence in YouTube. You know, the YouTube scene, and we're going to get back to that after I check the chat. So we got some new additions to the chat. Great to see everyone in the house tonight. I hope, you know, this isn't too, you know, I don't, you know, I know it's controversial, but I don't want it to, you know, you know, scare you away or any of that kind of stuff. These videos are just to inform you to know so you know what to look for, you know, so you can slow down time, read between the lines and look at what this digital reality is doing to others around you. And if you can do that, if you can look on Facebook, look at your friend's Facebook, or not your friends, but just look at your own feed. You're going to see people posting stuff. One classic uh, was, um, what's your 10 most favorite bands? You know, and then everyone would put all their bands. And one would be like, the, the, the real good one was just a personality profile, you know, and that's what they also use. Cambridge Analytica uses, but other companies and ad companies do personality profiles as well. And comic book people, hear me out. What superhero are you? What super villain are you? Answer these questions and take this personality profile. And then we'll put your face and name next to your superhero. So you can show all your friends who what superhero you are. So basically, they're taking data that you give them and then they can target you with, you know, an analytical personality profile thing. They can target you with ads or whatever bullshit is the main thing. And then you're also posting it again so then all your friends looks oh miss that dude yeah rob man great legend he's mr fantastic wow cool he can stretch yeah and he just fucking gave all the information to him yeah so you gotta really watch out i mean i had a a friend 
and it was a birthday gimmick one, you know, where like put in your birthday and then we'll I don't know what it was. <laughs> put your birthday in and we'll make you we'll make your spirit animal. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. It was some gimmick like that. I thought it was the most stupidest crap ever. But anyway, I know, it, 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 but it really, that kind of stuff sucks people in. You know, the, remember the 95%, they don't really know. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. They're living in that matrix, you know. They didn't take the pill like Keanu. Keanu took the pill. Keanu Reeves took that pill. And he got the F out of Dodge, man. We got Biggie Shaq in the house, baby. It's great to see Biggie Shaq. Uh, PD Hobbies, amen. And me, you know, PD, we've talked, you know, about this kind of stuff and just like, damn, it does get pretty boring. Honestly, I no longer watch people unboxing these boxes or even those AOKs because I just feel jealous and that's not good. Well, I don't really feel jealous, but I do have a great video on Legends Truth about jealousy in the YouTube community? I don't know. It's jealousy on, in the online or something like that. Really cool, though. Check Legends Truth playlist for that. But, yeah, some people do feel jealous, you know, of those books. Now, if you have the money, you're going to be, you know, matching up. You know, putting, you, you know, if you're jealous of someone, you may pay a lot of money to get, like, books just as good as that person, you know, because that may raise your, your YouTube stock, your social media stock. It may add more likes. It may add more little hearts on Instagram. And we see this kind of ridiculed and laughed at, but really for the future, that millennial generation and the one, you know, whatever the other one is, Generation Z maybe, I don't know. But those folks, they're going to live or die by, you know, what's on their phone here, you know? They're going to be living or dying by likes, dislikes, hearts comments that dopamine man it's a big time deal you know when you get the likes when you get the little dings when you get those notifications on your phone it's like you get that hit of dopamine oh damn this guy likes my stuff oh my goodness this girl likes my my videos awesome so you get that ding and a lot of times they're pulling the phone out a lot of times and you know what a lot of times does. It gives them that more screen time. I love this thing on the iPhone. I, I've set mine to. It's um, the little moon. It's called Do Not Disturb. And none of the crap comes up. You don't get beeped or nothing, you know. Of course, you can't hear phone calls or anything. But, I mean, you know, pretty nice to not be bothered, you know. But if you can't be bothered, will that lower that stock? If you're not getting back to your fans quick enough, will the fans go somewhere else? So a lot of times I feel this more with the younger generations. I feel like they really want to raise that stock up. Or maybe not even the young generations. Maybe just people that are new to YouTube or new to social media or to the online scene. They want to raise that stock all the way up. And man, I've had 10 years worth of YouTube and a lot of years in the other social media. And, man, it's it's a nightmare. I'm not going to lie. You know, I used to be at the peak. I used to get about, you know, I, I used to make some pretty good money. You know, I had some great video game videos back in the day. You know, a little 250 a little 300 a month. I mean, it was paying for my, my Skylanders and my comics. Man, it was some good times back in the day. You know, I worked my ass off. And I got my subs, you know, legit. You know, I didn't pay for subs, but that's a different video. <laughs> But, you know, working legit and mainly got over on video games and cooking, right? It wasn't until I got to the comic books where my stuff started kind of dwindling, but I didn't really care because I was showing what I liked and I was loving what I was showing. You know what I mean? It's like Hippie always says, and Cat Ren is adopted as her own, collect what you like, love what you collect, watch what you like, love what you watch. It can go with anything. You know what I mean? So once you kind of figure that out, you know, it's just you're having fun and you're not really worrying about anything else or any other channels. But if you're a channel that's growing to that 1,000, if you're one of those channels, yeah, you know, you're. it's just like PD Hobbies say. You know, you look on a channel, not only are you looking at these kick-ass comics these people are getting, but you're also looking at their subscriber count. You're looking at the likes, the dislikes. You're kind of, 
you know, scoping them out, you know, and, and seeing if are the fans giving the, the thumb up or the fans giving the thumb down. You know what I mean? And so a lot of times new YouTubers will come in to uh, the any YouTube, any, and this goes for any YouTube community. I'm just using the comic book community starting out because it's it's the new it's the latest community I've been a part of but sometimes new YouTubers will come in with those big aspirations of you know making a ton of money being a YouTube celebrity being a YouTube influencer you know which is just uh, uh, you know now I've even shared a couple of links to some uh, Amazon uh, you know for folks to you know if I do a hard drive review I'm going to put an Am Amazon link for people to go buy that hard drive and yeah I've gotten kickbacks before but it's you know work I'm putting in I mean the hard drives are just kick ass to begin with but say new YouTubers come in they want to go to the hottest channels the biggest channels you know the ones that seem to have the biggest crowds you know, the biggest D size, whatever you want to call it. And they'll kind of attach or like leech on, you know, like um, algae to a plant or something. I don't know, whatever they do down under the sea. But they'll kind of do that. And they'll kind of grow, slow growth, but, uh, you know, along with the other growth. But a lot of times, maybe the big channel will start doing their influencing on the smaller channels, and then it kind of, with the smaller channels, what that does, since they're getting influenced by the big channels, you know, big channels may send out AOKs. I don't know. It could be any kind of little gimmick. But they'll send those to small channels. So then the small channel will start to advertise for the big channel. And the big channel will just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the small channels... They just keep feeding in. And what am I doing? Are the, are the small channels going up very much? Not really. They're just kind of feeding in. They're staying at that balance, you know. But they're not getting it like the big ones, you know. So you also want to watch out for that. Any, you know, if, and, and once you get over the 1,000 subs and you start getting subs like crazy, the big-time YouTubers need to look out for other YouTubers that come along but that's the thing. It all It's just like pro wrestling. I always say wrestling imitates reality and reality imitates wrestling. And what I've learned over the years is to, you know, no matter how many people are sitting in their seats, I'm going to put on the best damn show you're ever going to see because there's only one great legend and you're looking at him right here. And that's the bottom damn line. You know what I'm saying? So I'm giving you that best show. You're getting the best quality entertainment every time this man puts on the beanie and this man, says, this man says a rhyme. You're getting it all the time here live on YouTube.com forward slash R Dowdy 95. I don't even remember when the last time I did a damn offline video. Man, you know how I roll. I shoot from the hip. And that's how I like it. But um, so you want to watch out for stuff like that in the YouTube scene, because a lot of times when people are on top, you know, when Hogan was on top, man, he didn't want anyone else on top. You know what I mean? But you have the guys that I aspire to be Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning, Dolph Ziggler, you know, those two guys. Amazing. Freaking amazing. Roddy Piper, of course. Who doesn't want to have commentary like Roddy Piper? That's one of the best right there. But as far as workhorses, works their ass off in the ring, put on great matches every single time is Mr. Perfect and Dolph Ziggler. You may not like the character, but, I mean, look at the spear uh, Goldberg did on Dolph, that first spear. He turned him inside out with that backflip gimmick. I mean, Ziggler put Goldberg over like Rover. You know what I mean? And that's what that's what I aspire to be, and that's something I've never forgotten to do. And when we first started doing all of our live shows here in the comic book community, we were always putting over people. I mean, like I said, you know, I'll say it again because it's the legend's truth, and it's the truth. First one in the YouTube comic book community to have their own solo live show. This was the first guy. Back-to-back -back wins on the best live show in the YouTube comic book community from Comic Uno in 2013 and 2014. 
And my first live show, I think, was in 2012. But And also being on a part of the very first comic book live show ensemble on YouTube right here. You know, so I've had the years, I've had the experience, I've had the exposure, but now it's time to get others over like Rover. So that's my plan. So every time I've gone along, I'll, you know, throw the old duffel bag over my shoulder and go like Bill Bigsby. And I'll go through different phases where I'll be a solo act or I'll go join a show. Um, I was solo uh, after, you know, comic book round table and the, all that crap happened, which it was just stupid anyway. But jealousy pretty much ended a friendship between two excellent YouTubers. I ain't going to name the names. But I went ahead and left that and started doing my own thing again. But mainly uh, going to other people's channels, showing them love, watching their shows, commenting on them, you know, letting them know if they have any questions, you know, come see me. I had a lot of help videos. And then other ways would just be sh keep shouting them out in the chats, you know, because doing my own thing. You won one award one year. You won it the next year, two years in a row. You know you're doing something. So I was doing that. And then I joined Blaster Stash, one of the greatest comic book channels you're ever going to find. It's on Sunday nights live. And also Huey dro uh, drops content weekly to let you know what's coming out on Wednesday and what some of the good books that he's going to be picking up. And then on Sunday night, you get the whole Blaster Stash at crew with uh, Huey's Comics. You get Paul, Midwest Comic Man, sometimes. You get Drew, Manchu. You get Spectacular Spider Grandpa, and you get Pocan Joe going over books that they read that they picked up on Wednesday, and they're letting you know if it was like if they enjoyed it or if they're uh, not digging it. So that's why it's called Blaster Stash. But I love that show, and I love being a part of that show because. 2013, 2014, I already had Wiz Comics number two. I had Fantastic Four number one. I got Fantastic Four 48, 9.4. I got all that stuff, man. I don't really want to keep spending any more money on people I don't like. You know what I mean? So I don't let, like, they always ask me, when you getting that giant size? When you getting that giant size X-Men? I ain't getting no giant size X-Men. When you get that Hulk 181? Well, I could have had both of those 9.4 for 11K in 2013. But I didn't go there because they weren't my characters, you know. And I waited. And Wiz Comics number two came along. Thank you. Mass Marvel. Mass Marvel let me know. I got my Wiz Comics number two. My, uh, th To me, that was Action Comics number one. You know, you, if you put Detective 27, Action number one, and Wiz number two, and you line them up all side by side, and you shine up that slab real nice and bright, and you put it in mylar so that shit reflects light, like angels light coming out of the heavenly gates up from above. You know the one I'm going to love, the one I'm going to choose, the one that's going to give me the most pleasure, the, the, the book that the book that will please. And that's the big red cheese. I'm going with too, baby. And I got that shit, man. Because I didn't jump on the bandwagon. I didn't keep up with the Joneses. I don't even fucking like X-Men. The movies are okay. But I mean, like, it's not my heart. It's not my soul. You know what I'm saying? It ain't the fantastic freaking foe. You know, another great um, video, and I'll put it on the community tab. What the Marvel Age means to me. Man, that was a great video. So if you're into 1961 Silver Age Marvel and above, check that Legends Truth out. It's not really a Legends Truth, but it's just my love for Marvel 1961. And man, I was able to, you know, bring my love for books and bring my love for reading and reviewing and just entertainment and camaraderie to Blaster Stash. I remember one of those times we were in, me and Paul was in, after uh, the blaster stash it like you know the the hangouts you know we'd stay in the hangouts right and um i i, I think I, I seen dave man i seen dave dave was like me and paul was really talking about some heavy duty history and shit and then huey was kind of surprised because boy i know my shit but that's that legend persona when legend persona is on the scene he's going to give you that entertainment because again legend wants to put those guys over and, man, Trinity joined us, and, man, we really got it over, man. Blaster Stash It, still to this day, one of the hottest shows you're ever going to see in the YouTube comic book community. And I got those guys over, man, and I was so proud to do that. Um, and then, of course, you know, 
time to, you know, Bill Bigsby it up. Go help the next person down the road. So then I started doing a lot more live auctions. You know, me and Houdat, Big Bear, Jason Smith, Amazing Murfinator. We were the the main dudes, man, on the auction scene. And it was just awesome. We did the Heroes Initiative auction, which was very successful. We raised over um, $10,000, but, you know, take away the Super Chat uh, bullshit. We raised 9500 for the Hero Initiative. So that was a way we were able to help um, – and that was actually just not me. That was the whole community. We all came together, Hero Initiative Auction, and we really kicked some ass and uh, turned the YouTube comic book community on its ass with just the best in, you know, helping others and helping those comic book creators that we've all, you know, love and adore. So we did that as a big community. So that was really a lot of fun. Then, you know, an old man, you know, gets old after a while, you know, 10 years and sitting in this chair. You know, sitting in the chair, man. And I, and I think God looks down upon people in the chair. <laughs> That's some trailer park boy stuff. Sorry, I did, it's just crazy. But, you know, my back starts hurting, so I can't do the live auctions anymore. But it doesn't matter because we got Thoro Kibioro, BLC646. We got the New York Warriors. We got the West Coast scene, man. You got all these auctions all over the place. You got the Comic Core live auction. You got Whitewell Whitewell Comics auction. Uh, man, you got auctions. You got all kind of auctions, man. Lords of the Long Box auctions, man. We got auctions. Oh, man. It's insane, man. It's insane. I mean, me and Biggie, we used to kid. We was like, yeah, this year, it was 2018 was the year of the auction. And, man, wasn't that the damn truth, man? It was amazing. That's why. Oh, Barbar Barbarian Kung Fu. Great to see you in the house, Barbarian. Using fads and gimmicks. He does sell like a mofo, Biggie. He really does. But um, this is something to look out uh, for. And then, of course, you know, we did uh, reviews in the Batcave where it was a, a culmination of some guys. We all came together to make an awesome freaking show. And then, of course, that turned on into the Comic Core. And, man, we've been running wild ever since. You know, we've been adding more shows. You know, we got shows Monday through Friday. Occasionally we have shows on Saturday, Sunday live over there on the Comic Core. Great Legend, of course, announced his retirement back over, was it maybe in July? Oh, my God. I think I actually missed my 10-year video anniversary because that, that was like a September thing. I joined YouTube in July, but my first video was in September of uh, 2009. Holy hell. But um, I always had a great time. And, and you know, the future's the limit. And helping out the Comic Core. That's really what I need to do. That's what I need to focus on. Of course, I'm still going to be doing Legends Truth and, and you know minor stuff on the channel. I'm trying to get back into it. Uh, trying to keep that passion alive. Trying to keep that drive and try to keep that intensity and just all the fun stuff you want to see in the Great Legend you see here on the Great Legend show. But um, that's what I'm really trying to do. But you really need to look out, fans and ask yourself that question, are you under the influence of social media? You know, how often do you check that social media? You know, are you led down a path that you don't really want to be led down, but a lot of other people are doing it? We well, you know a lot of other people are, are going to be doing a lot of things that, you know, I'm not going to be doing. Remember, I'm, I'm in that small group up here. This is all those people running in the hamster wheel. But if you can find, you know, your true passion and put your heart and soul into what you like, put your heart and soul into what you love, man, you're going to be doing great and you're going to rise above. You're going to rise above all jealousy and all hate and all that other stuff. But the key is, you know, especially when you look on Facebook, because when you look through your Facebook feeds, if you've noticed this, your Facebook feed, when you look through it, it's supposed to trigger a response, an emotional response from your brain. That's what its plan is. It wants to trigger that response. It wants to keep you on their app longer. These apps, they are built and intended to keep the user on there as long as they can so they can influence you, so they can mind control you as long as they can. You know, so definitely look out for that and look at the um, the stuff you read. You know, you'll see memes that may piss you off, you know, um, 
I don't know why I always see like memes like that that piss me off, but it's because they want me to comment back. They want me to, you know, maybe, you know, disagree with the person that posted the meme so we may get into an argument on social media because like I said, social media wants to divide us. It's like the civil war of today's digital reality and that's what social media is. So I want to thank each and every one of you, all of you in the chat, glitter and duct tape, like what you like, amen to that. Thank y'all all so much for showing up tonight here live on The Legend's Truth as we talked about are you under the influence of social media? And I think a lot of us, me included, you know, not since November 2016 because the veil was lifted. And if you want that video, you know, check in the Legends Truth archives. You'll find that video to when the veil was lifted before my eyes. And damn surprise, it's a lot, it's a lot better looking on this side of the bubble and uh, this side of the veil. So remember that, man. Try to lift that veil. Try to wake up from the digital reality. Try to get as much analog as you can because... It's running out, people. You know, you're, we're, we're running out of time, you know, as far as that stuff goes. So you want to definitely make sure about, you know, your, where you want to be in life and all that kind of stuff. But, fans, this has been a great, great freaking live show. I hope if you're watching this on the Rewind, check out Comic Core Monday through Friday. Monday, we got Story Comic Core. Tuesday night, tonight, we had the Golden Guys. And tonight, we had the special inclusion. You're going to get this, I think, just once a month. But you get that special bonus show attached on the end called Stranger Things with JD Comics and TJ the Slab Dragon Watson. Excellent show. Wednesday night, new comic book day. It's unlimited potential on Comic Core Unlimited. Man, great show where the guys go over all of their books that they read that day and they want to tell you all about it. They want to be the first one in the Comic Core to bring you that news and bring you what they read. Thursday, it's an entertainment show. Everything except comics outside the issues now of course we do talk about comic book movies but we do try to stay outside the issues sometimes my boy chad he likes to go off the rails and try to get comic books back into it you know all damn comic books you know but we got to talk about some shows sometime and we got to talk outside the issues and friday it's that hottest show it's on the best best time slot of all time on Fridays is at 9 Central, 10 Eastern Standard Time. And I've been on probably the biggest, best, hottest live shows in the comic book community on Friday nights since the great legend got to the comic book community. It's some good times, some good rhymes, you know, no doubt about it. Ain't, ain't nothing like it, man. But, um, man, so definitely check out Friday. It's off the freaking rails. And you never know what's going to happen on that show or who we're going to interview or what we're going to be drinking or whatever's going on, man. It's it's an insane time, but it's a fun time. And then on Saturdays, you may see an occasional comic or auction. Sunday, you never know. There may be a show about something or rather one of these days. And sprinkle throughout the week, like, Hulk Hogan used to sprinkle a little bit of that Hulk Hogan dust on those guys like Earthquake or Brutus the fucking Barber Beefcake or whoever. You know, you sprinkle that that red and yellow dust and it's going to uh, make some pretty good money and make some pretty good waves and get those people over. And I want to give a humongous shout out to Drew Man Chu. He is, you know amazing man amazing guy we don't always see eye to eye on like comics and everything i i do think he's mind controlled by the mouse but most people are the house of mouse house of m house of x house of sex whatever the hell you're reading but a lot of people are controlled by the mouse which is kind of funny but that's okay we still love him anyway um he uh, you know does this amazing thing where he does all of his solo reviews and he puts them on the Comic Core channel. So instead of putting him on his own channel to make his own, you know, stuff go up, you know, his own likes, views, videos, whatever, you know, to get his shit over, he doesn't do that. He puts them on the Comic Core 
to help the Comic Corps get over. So he's putting his solo reviews. He's taking one for the team. You know, he's putting his ass out there, bumping all over the place for the Comic Corps, and we couldn't be any more prouder of Drew Manchu and the love and just support that he gives to the Comic Corps. And we have a lot of people that do that. You know, we got all the Comic Corps members. I can't name them all off the top of my head. Well, you know what? I can I can damn well give it a try. I mean, there's a humongous team of us in the Facebook chats. I can't name all those people, but I can name Whitewell Comics, John's Comics with Kids. Man, I can name, um, we got Knights of Old, Comics Misexplain, freaking uh, DS Comics, Midwest Comic Man, JD Comics. We got TJ the Slab Dragon, freaking Watson. We got, who else? Um, Comic Spectre. Um, there's someone else on Unlimited. Maybe I'm, yeah, it's JD, John, and Whitewell, I think. Yeah, they're Unlimited. Um, but multiple guests, you know. We got Thursday. We got Cat Wren. We got Drew Man Chu. We got Mark BKR, who's Cat Wren's significant other, who just eats all kind of food like no other. Uh, we got Chad, Comic Car Chad. He's kind of like our. Uh, what did he call it? Our uh, dude behind the scenes, you know, is sitting in that gorilla position. You know what I mean? So he's doing all that crap through StreamYard. And then we got the show on Friday, Off the Freaking Rails, you know, which is more Carson, Cat Ren, Drew Manchu, myself, Midwest Comic Man, and Chad. So just a great time had by all. Oh, Comic Cat 84. Yeah, oh yeah. And then, you know, just a multitude. We've had special guests. We've had Biggie Shack on. We've had just all these folks on before. I mean, and if if you ever want to be a guest star, oh, we had Downright Nerdy Podcast on. We've had Thoro Kuboro on, I believe. I mean, just so many people. Comic Books NYC, Perry, tons of people out there. So if y'all want to be on that Comic Corps, let us know. We'll get y'all on there. Barbarian Kung Fu, if you ever want to get on there, that's why we got to roll. We got to get you on there, get you to talk some comics and stuff. I ain't seen you lately out on the scene of YouTube land. Glitter and Duct Tape, he says, I enjoy Comic Corps on Fridays. Oh, man, yeah, boy. Smurf, C- Caleb, Caleb in the house. He, I just haven't seen him in a long time. And Discovery Bay celebrating the big 2-0 wedding anniversary up there in Alaska on the cruise. I talked to him today. Damn it. Thank you, Biggie. I totally forgot. And I had actually talked to him today. But so many great people on the Comic Corps. We would love to have you on the Comic Corps anytime. We're going to be at Baltimore Comic Con. If you're in the Baltimore area, make sure you come by and see Comic Corps. We are official exhibitors at the Comic Corps. So make sure you all come by and see us and Get on camera with us. Have some fun, man. It's going to be a kick-ass time on the Comic Core, man. And the great legend may even give you some rhymes. You never know until you make it to that show. But anyways, fans, thanks again. Everyone in the chat, y'all know where I said it. It's you're here live. YouTube.com forward slash r 95 where the great legend's always coming at you live. Comics, cooking, gaming, and the truth. Are you under the influence of social media. I'm not. <laughs> I'm under the influence of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only, baby. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> this is the great legend saying peace out. God bless.
Thank you.